Hello everyone, it's Caleb Robbins here. Yes, I no longer go by LegoFan65. So, welcome to the 18th episode of LegoFan65's Childhood Inn. But actually, no scratch it, it's now Caleb's Childhood Inn. Ha <laughs> ha, like my new name? Because that's my real name, Caleb Robbins. Anyway, in this episode, we are going to be talking about one of the most hated animated films of all time. And that movie is Cars 2. So, let's get into my history with this thing. Okay, so when Cars 2 came out, I was 7 years old, and I had recently just become a fan of the first movie. Go and check out my video of the first movie if you haven't seen it yet. It explains how much I loved the Cars franchise as a whole. So, when I was told that there was going to be a sequel to the first movie, I of course was excited. So, me and my family, being big time Disney fans, we went and saw it in theaters, and I remember my, my dad really enjoying it. And my mom didn't really say anything about it. She doesn't really care for the Cars franchise, so all she said was, that wasn't really Pixar's best work, but it was okay. Well, um, I actually thought this movie was leagues better than the first Cars movie because of all the spy action in it, and that Mater was the main character since he was my, fir my, my favorite character in the first movie. I just loved it for two years straight. I might even say that it was my favorite Pixar movie back then, but it's not my all-time favorite Disney movie nowadays. That credit goes to Aladdin. After I saw the movie, I constantly tried to get every piece of merchandise that coincided with the release of it. I collected several more die-cast medals, bulls, I recreated the World Grand Prix races numerous times, the oil rig chase scene, all the great scenes about this movie. I would play the video game both on PS3 and DSi a lot. Hell, I even had that old AppMates app where you put little magnet cars on an iPad and drive them around. I miss that app so much. So when the movie first came out on DVD and Blu-ray, me and my family got it, and I'm pretty sure I watched it every week after school, and I never seemed to get bored of it. In 2014, however, I decided to step away from the Cars franchise because, well, I've just gotten to other things such as Spongebob, Elvis, Star Wars, The Amazing World of Gumball, yeah, stuff like that. And I never thought about the movie again until Cars 3 came out, but that's for another video. However, in 2018, when I first started high school, I was in a nostalgic mood, so I pulled out all three Cars films and decided to watch them all, and when I got to the second one, I still really enjoyed it, but not as much as I used to. And after that, I never watched it again up until this point. Heck, later on, near the end of my freshman year of high school, I was talking to one of my teachers about the movie and asking her about her take on the Cars franchise as a whole. And she told me that the first and third one were good, but she absolutely despised the second one. And I was shocked, because this was a movie that I had been in love with for most of my elementary school career, and I never understood why she hated it. And so, I watched it again, and then I slowly started to understand where she was coming from. And after I finished it, I said to myself, Okay, that wasn't as good as I thought it was, but I still enjoyed some of it. And for this most recent rewatch for this video, I can say that I still enjoy some of this movie, and that I don't think it's as bad as people make it out to be. It's certainly not my least favorite Disney movie of all time. That honor goes to Toy Story 4. First, let's talk about the bad stuff in this movie. Oh, just, just so you know, the unlucky tug back in April made a 75 minute video on all three Cars movies, and it has way many things about it for me to talk about, so I'll just keep this short. First of all, yes, the direction that this movie went in is completely different from the first one for reasons unknown. I guess they just wanted to expand the Cars universe, that, that's my theory. Secondly, the writing is sloppy in some places. The Lemons' plan to take over the world makes absolutely no sense, and if they are already on the biggest oil reserve in the world, they would already be rich beyond their wildest freaking dreams. The fact that there is human food in the movie makes no sense considering all the characters are cars, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard the same criticisms of this movie it has had over the years, so let's just move on to the good stuff. First of all, I think we can all agree that Michael Giacchino's score for this picture is amazing. I might even say that it's up to the same level as John Williams' Star Wars score and Randy Newman's Toy Story score. So, the score gets a pass in this video. Next up, the animation, it's stellar here. It is amazing, especially the racing scenes with McQueen racing on the European courses, particularly the Tokyo race, which is probably the best race in the entire movie, in my opinion. It's definitely where most of the action in the movie happens. Now let's talk about the new characters. Finn McMessel and Holly Shepo are my favorite characters in this movie. 
Kentucky. They are league superior than Francesco Bernini, Presti, and Miles Axelrod, in my opinion. Anyway, despite the fact that there are total idiots in this movie and actually believe the fact that Mater is an actual spy, even though he clearly shows that he is not, but that's criticism. First of all, I was in love with Finn McMissile as a kid. Back then, he was probably my favorite character in the whole Cars franchise, mainly thanks to Michael Caine's performance. I also remember having a thing for Holly at a young age, mainly through her pretty purple color and Emily Mortimer's performance. Now, Francesco Bernoulli, I wasn't really obsessed with. I mean, I enjoyed racing him against McLean with my diecast cars, but overall, it was mainly Finn and Holly who stole the show for me. John Turturro does do a good performance as him, though. As for Miles Axelrod and Professor Z, let's just say that they are at least interesting characters. First of all, as we all know, at the end of this movie, if you've seen it, it's revealed that Miles Axelrod is the bad guy who had the whole plan to rule the world set up right. Well, his true nature is kind of a duh, because think of it. If he's the one who created the all in all, the lemons are using it to hurt the racers, and Professor Z is talking to someone with a disguised voice, every point. Every point. Uh, so, <clears throat> every piece of evidence points directly towards him. Send him to prison already. Also, decent performance by Eddie Izzard. Next up, Professor Z. I was certainly intimidated by him as a kid, and I thought he was probably the most threatening villain of Disney history. And I can think of back then, which was, again, mainly due to Thomas's Cr Thomas Kretschmann performance. I think that's how you say his name. And I do believe that if Professor Z was the true main antagonist of this movie, the plot wouldn't have been about the same if Axelrod had nothing to do with the lemons whatsoever. Okay, that's all I have to say about Cars 2. Let's see if I would recommend it or not. Now, this is going to be very controversial, but I say yes. I do recommend Cars 2. It's a marginal yes, though, because the writing is sloppy. Some scenes make absolutely no sense. The fact that Miles Axrod is the main antagonist of this movie is kind of a duh. But I did you notice how I didn't point out that Mater was the main character of this movie? Well, he is. Um, I didn't mind that change a whole lot. A lot of people did criticize that because if you've seen the first one, you know that Lightning was the main character. But it's just... I... I just, I really do find this a decent film whenever I watch it. I know, like, it's technically a bad film if you compare it to the first and third one. But just, like, I, I enjoy watching it. I think it satisfies me. Hey, do I think it's better than the first Cars film? No. Do I think it's better than Cars 3? Absolutely not. This is by far the worst Cars film. But, Child of Nostalgia always wins for me, so... Yes, I recommend you go and see Cars 2. This may have been my most controversial episode, like Lego Lovers. Like, it was actually Cars 2 as well. Shout out to Lego Lover 117. Um, like I said, it is the worst Cars film. That doesn't mean I don't like it, though. I like all three Cars films. Because how much I loved that franchise as a kid. Okay, that wraps up the 18th episode of Caleb's Childhood Inn. All right, I'll see you in the next Childhood episode where I review Toy Story, and it probably won't be until 2023. All right, bye.